Hello everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be teaching you the basics on how to crochet right-handed. If you are left-handed, this could work, but I would recommend finding a tutorial online on how to crochet uh, for left-handed people because uh, it can be a little bit confusing because what I'm doing will be mirror image to what you're doing. So the things I'm, you're going to need are some type of yarn, obviously. I wouldn't recommend kind of a fluffy yarn like this because that can sometimes get annoying. A yarn like uh, with an extra type of string in it can also be annoying. If you are just starting out, I would pick a nice smooth yarn like this that's relatively large so it's easy to hold on to and a crochet hook that works well with it. There are all sorts of sizes of crochet hooks for the type of yarn you're using. And then once you get the hang of it, you can really use any yarn you'd like. I would just recommend a nice smooth one to start with. These are the two I'm going to be using. So first, we're going to create a slip knot. So um, some of you might already know how to do this, but I will show you how to do it anyway, just in case. So the first thing you're going to do is lay your yarn out like this and then cross over the short side to form a loop. Then put your two fingers through the loop you made, grab the yarn and pull it through creating another loop around your finger like this. Then if you pull on one side you should be able to tighten it or loosen it and if you pull it all the way it will even come undone. So after you've created a slip knot, you can tighten it around your crochet hook like this, um, making sure it's loose enough that you can easily move your crochet hook around. Now the short end of your yarn is going to be called the tail end, and that is not being used, like you don't work with that. You're going to use the end that is attached to your ball of yarn. There are many different ways you can hold your yarn when you go to start crocheting. Um, these are just some ways I've seen people do it, but I like to um, hold it where you take your non-dominant hand, wrap the yarn around one finger, and then hold it with your thumb and your middle finger. Then you take the crochet hook and you can simply grab the yarn with the ho crochet hook like this and pull it through the loop, but don't slide it off your hook. I hope I'm not too confusing here. I've never actually really done a tutorial on how to do something like this. You just need to practice and it's not too hard to get the hang of. So just keep um, grabbing the yarn, uh, yarn and pulling it through the loop, but then making sure it stays on, you always have a loop on your crochet hook like this. And this is called a chain stitch and you would just make the chain as long as you want, usually. And most projects start with a chain like this. Next, we're going to go do the next stitch. So you're going to go in to the stitch um, behind the one you did pull a loop of, of yarn through and then loop the yarn over your hook again and pull it through. So you can kind of get an idea, like your, your hook will easily be able to go through the stitch. You shouldn't have to push too hard. You might have to if you made it a little bit tighter, but then you just grab the yarn on the other side, like I said before. So you'll have two loops on your hook and then grab the yarn again, like before when we did the chain stitch, and pull it to, uh, pull it through both loops. So you should have something that is like this. Then you're just gonna continue all the way back down to the other end, putting your hook through the next stitch, grabbing the yarn and pulling it through so you have two loops, and then pulling some more yarn through both loops so you only have one loop like this. So if you happen to run out of yarn, 
it's very simple to fix that. You can just add more yarn by putting your hook through the stitch and this time looping the new yarn over your hook. Then you can just continue as before by um, getting the two loops on your um, hook and then pulling the yarn through. And you just continue that all the way and this is, I forgot to mention, this stitch is called a single crochet stitch and it's one of the most commonly used crochet stitches. Um, if you had to attach more yarn, you'll have two ends in the middle of your project, but don't worry about that, we'll fix it later. Then you just continue to single crochet all the way back to the other end. Just make sure you poke through the stitch and you don't accidentally poke through the same one multiple times because then you'll end up with a little bump. So what if you do poke through it multiple times like this, and like I said, you'll end up with a bit of a bump, but if you make a mistake, you can simply pull your hook th out of the loop and then pull back on your yarn until it undoes, it'll unravel what you did. And then you can just put your hook back through the loop and continue just as before. So this is really, an easy way to get rid of any mistake you might have made. You can always undo it and start again without unraveling everything. Once you get to the end, you should have something like this. This now has two rows on it. And as you can see, we have attached some more yarn so you have two little tail ends in the middle of your project. So now to go back, you're going to flip your work again. And what if you want to keep it square? Now this, you could just go back and forth, but it's slowly going to become a triangle. So if you want to keep it square, you have to chain one at the end before continuing. So I just chained one like we did in the beginning, and then you continue to single crochet back, just like we did before by putting your hook through the next stitch and making two loops and then you will grab the yarn and pull it through both loops so you only have one. Now obviously you will have different patterns depending on different things that you're making where you might not single crochet all the way back and forth and back and forth. For example, when I made the horse bonnets in a previous video, I um, did a crochet version for one of them and I didn't necessarily go back and forth and back and forth. I chained three on one end, that way it could start forming a triangle. But near the end, I had to, after I got past the ears, I had to make it a little bit smaller. So now I'm going to show you an in-depth version of how you make your crochet work go a little bit smaller gradually. So to do that, you're basically going to join two stitches together. So you're going to single, begin your single crochet like you usually would, putting two loops on your yarn, I mean on, putting two loops of yarn on your hook, but then you're going to, instead of grabbing more yarn to pull through, you're going to go into the next stitch and do the same thing you usually would. So you have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to grab the yarn and pull through all three. You, this way you join two um, crochet stitches together, which now become one and they slowly make the work a little bit smaller. So once you've decided you are done your work, then you can simply cut the end of your yarn, leaving about six or seven inches and then pull it through all the way at the end, like this. Then just pull it tight and this will create a knot. Now you could cut it off here, but I like to hide the tail into the crochet. So uh, I just um, go back and forth and grab the yarn and kind of weave it in and out. You can also use a large yarn needle if you like, but I just like to do it with my crochet hook. I find it easier. And then you can see I'm just pulling it in and out 
in t um, just for a few stitches. I did about I usually do about three or four stitches, and then once it's come once it comes out on the bad side of your uh, work, if there if it's like a scarf or something and there's really no bad side or good side, then it doesn't really matter. But I like to put it on the bad side and put them all on the same side. You can after that you can just cut it. Then you can go back to the first. Uh, the very beginning of your work and there'll be a little bit more yarn at the end and you can just weave that back and forth too. Then if you happen to have added any more yarn, you have to tie that into a double knot, sometimes a triple if the yarn's really slippery, and then you can cut those off. So you should have something like this afterwards. These are just three stitches in crochet that you need to know to do a lot of different things. And those are the three I used when I made my horse bonnets in the previous video. There will be a link to that video in the description if you'd like to see. Um, and you can use this, these simple techniques to make anything really, like a little blanket, a headband, or even a horse bonnet like I said before. So thank you so much for watching this video and if you have any ideas for future videos please feel free to leave a comment. I always need ideas and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.